Hey guys, Charlie from Airplane Academy. Today I was flying back into my home airport of Addison, Texas, which sits underneath the DFW crazy class B airspace. And it's one of the busiest places to fly in the country, if not the world. And so as usual, it was just crazy talking on the radio. And when I learned to fly here, that used to be one of the things that most intimidated me about flying. And quite honestly, now it's one of my very favorite things about flying. So how do you go from it being the thing that most scares you to the thing you almost most look forward to? Well, there's five things that I kind of realized that after about a thousand hours of flying here, things that I'd inevitably got better at that just made it way easier to talk to air traffic control. And so if you can just avoid these five things, I promise it's gonna make you a better pilot. So let's jump in. So going in reverse order, the number five mistake that I see pilots making is being a robot when it comes to talking on the radio and always just complying with whatever air traffic control tells you to do. And I think it's really important to build the habit of taking inventory of what air traffic control just assigned you to do and just double checking for a microsecond, is that in the best interest of the safety of this flight? Because air traffic controllers will be the first to tell you that they're human. They make mistakes, just like we as pilots make mistakes. It's, it's an imperfect system, right? I'll give you an example. The other day I was leaving uh, Mesquite Airport. I love that airport. I soloed there. The controllers do a great job. Uh, but I was taking off to the north and my flight path was taking me to the southwest. And so when they cleared me for takeoff, they told me to make right traffic. So it'd be right turns, which actually would take me when I was departing southwest across the approach end uh, of that northern runway, landing to the north there. And I just honestly didn't really think about it. I just complied and said, okay, right traffic and depart to the Southwest. And when I started crossing over the center line of the runway there on departure, we got in a little argument over the radio, you know, hey, why are you doing that? And I said, check the tape. But I should have been able to avoid that far be over, before it ever happened by just saying, hey, do you actually mean a left turnout? You want left traffic departure here, which would have kept me on the west side of the airport and out of the way of the inbound traffic. So that was an example where I messed up, where I just didn't really register what he was saying. I didn't think ahead to say, hey, is that really what you're wanting me to do here? Is that correct? So things like that, just always double check what air traffic is telling you to do and take inventory. Don't automatically say yes, but take a nanosecond and vet it and then uh, agree or speak up and ask for clarification. The number four mistake that I see pilots making all the time, and this one is probably the easiest to fix. So you should be able to fix this starting from here on out. And that is talking on the radio before listening for a few seconds. And air traffic controllers, oftentimes, if you go listen to them at a conference or a speech, you know, we ask, hey, what as pilots can we be doing to help you guys? And so many times the answer is, will you just wait a second before you join a frequency, before you switch frequencies and join ours? Will you just wait a second to figure out, are we in the middle of talking to someone? Are we in the middle of a transmission? Is there an emergency situation happening? What's kind of the context of of uh, the radio and what's happening before you chime in and check in to center or you call the tower or you're calling ground. Just take you know five, 10 seconds to just listen and see what's going on. Wait for a gap in the radio communications to then make your call. This is so simple to implement. Just get in the habit of once you flip, uh, switch over frequencies, just wait a good 10 seconds and kind of scope it out, see what's going on before you make your call so you make sure you're not interrupting something important. The number th that's two. The number three mistake, number three, three if you're overseas in Germany, the number three mistake that drives me crazy and I try so hard not to do this is uh, incompletion. Incompletion? I don't think that's a word. Is incomplete transmissions on the radio. I'll give you examples. Uh, this particularly happens when you are flying in uncontrolled airspace and it's up to you to announce your in intentions, your location, your type of aircraft, etc. This is one of the things that I think is, is more than just a pet peeve, but actually impacts safety. And that is just being incomplete on the radio. So if you're, if you're coming into an airport, um, you know, so a, an example of a good transmission would be Gillespie County traffic, Skylane 916 Delta Foxtrot, we're 10 miles to the northeast inbound for landing runway 14. We'll cross over midfield and enter right traffic, uh, Gillespie County. 
And so Gillespie County, it's right traffic landing uh, on one four. But if you leave out any one of those elements, it can actually be really dangerous. You leave out the uh, airport in the very beginning. Most people don't miss that, but okay, well, where are you talking? What type of aircraft are you? A lot of these rural airports, sometimes people will just announce a tail number, but they won't talk about what type of aircraft they are. So that didn't help you very much if I just said 916 Delta Foxtrot instead of Skylane 916 Delta Foxtrot or even just Cessna 916 Delta Foxtrot. What type of aircraft are you? Because as other people are trying to maintain spacing from you, well, maintaining spacing from a Skylane versus a Phenom jet are very, very different things. So what type of aircraft are you? What are your intentions? A lot of people will just say inbound for landing Gillespie County, which I guess we can kind of infer that you're probably landing 1-4 based on the winds, but what if winds are calm? We don't really know what your intentions are. Always be speaking up on that. One that drives me nuts is when people just say, I'm on the downwind or I'm on the base. Well, is it left downwind or right downwind? Is it left base or is it right base? Which runway are you landing? I mean, all of those things are super important for other uh, traffic in the pattern or other traffic that are you know 10 miles away, but they're, but they're coming in and they're trying to kind of take inventory and map where everyone is uh, in the pattern so they can kind of plan their entry accordingly. It drives me crazy when people leave these things out or they just say, uh, or they don't repeat the airport at the end of their transmission because sometimes you might be blocked for the first few seconds and so all of a sudden we'll just hear landing one four. And so, okay, well, is that Gillespie County? Is that some other airport? What is it? You always wanna repeat the airport at the end of your transmission. These are all things that you should be doing anyways. This is all by the book. But if you start omitting any of these things, it has real safety implications. And so, uh, you know, uncontrolled airports especially, but this also really impacts when you're talking to controllers and you leave out key information that you know they're gonna be looking for. So just do everything by the book. Never leave something out of the transmission. Uh, don't be overly descriptive if you don't have to be. Just say what you need to, uh, but definitely don't leave anything out. The number two mistake I see pilots making, and this one is really easy to fix, okay, is not speaking up. One of my favorite examples of this that I heard a couple years ago on the radio was when an American Airlines pilot was talking to approach controller and they're giving him a bunch of instructions and his response was, I'm confused, I want to be unconfused. So a professional captain was speaking up saying, I don't understand what you're telling me to do, I need clarification. So many times, and I've, I've done this myself, I, we just kind of go along with what air traffic control says, even though we might not fully understand what they meant by it, and we're just kind of inferring or we're trying to guess the rest. Anytime you're unsure, just speak up. Say you're confused, you didn't understand. Uh, another really helpful one is if you um, really can't see an airport because of haze, or that's an example that happens a lot coming back into Addison, you can always ask for a vector. You say, hey, no, I don't see the airport. I don't see that traffic. Um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need a vector. Can you give me a heading? That's stuff that air traffic control is there to do. Um, it, you can ask for, for vectors and clarifications and, and help just anytime. Don't be afraid to speak up because they are there to help you. And the number one mistake that pilots make that I think makes us less proficient when it comes to talking on the radio is not knowing what to expect. Now, certainly as a student pilot, some of this is just because you need to get exposed to more situations where you learn what to expect. So you're just kind of learning what all the systems and the cadences and stuff are. That's totally normal. It's just like learning a new language and you'll get better at it. But even for more experienced pilots, this can really trip you up on the radio when you're not thinking ahead of what to expect. So I sometimes will get comfortable, particularly if I'm flying IFR, I get real comfortable that I kind of already know the approach I'm gonna fly, I kind of know the exact waypoints and the flight plan is all set in stone and I might get a little complacent and I'm not thinking about, well shoot, what if they put me into a hold here? Am I ready for that? Am I ready to copy that down? Am I kind of thinking ahead of reminding myself kind of the hold procedures and things? Um, because if I'm not and they give me a hold, then I gotta catch up to that and, and uh, you know, it can cause um, a, a little bit of panic here if I'm not expecting it because I'm already locked in uh, to, to doing uh, another procedure or something. Um, and so thinking ahead is going to help you so much, even for uncontrolled airports. 
If you start monitoring the, uh, the, uh, the CTAF when you're five miles from the airport and all of a sudden you realize the, tra the traffic pattern is crazy and you're not really sure how to enter it because there's eight airplanes in the pattern, well, that could have been avoided if you would have started listening way sooner so you could understand how busy things were and where you're gonna fit into that. Just thinking ahead of what air traffic control or even uncontrolled airports are going to need from you before it happens is going to make you so much more confident. Um, and as you fly bigger airplanes and faster airplanes, um, it's gonna become even more important because everything happens so much faster. And so you gotta be way, way ahead of the aircraft and really think ahead, what is air traffic control going to need from me? And so if you can think logically what's going to happen in each phase of the flight and already kind of be there mentally, you will very seldomly get caught off guard uh, by air traffic control and get confused or say the wrong thing. So just thinking ahead is gonna make you such a better pilot. And that goes for checklists and air traffic control, so many things. Thinking ahead is super important. I've got hair on the face. Didn't think ahead on that one. If you're interested in learning more um, about kind of air traffic control tips and tricks. I also put together another video of 15 things uh, that you can do to instantly get better talking to air traffic control. So not just these five things to avoid, but 15 things you can be doing to practice and get better. So I encourage you to watch that video. I think it'll be really helpful. Uh, but either way, I hope you'll also subscribe to this channel and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video and uh, get to meet you and talk to you down in the comments.